Access TV. It's Gotham Comedy, live. Get ready to laugh with Pat Dixon, Casey Balsham, Ian Fidance, Joe Bartnick, and your host, Tommy Davidson. Gotham Comedy Live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Tommy Davidson! What's up? What's up? What's up, New York? Just got back from Afghanistan. <laughs> Shit got quiet, didn't it? <laughs> huh? Ain't it a war going on over there? African-American soldiers are different, though. That national anthem's different, you know? Remember the white guy used to sing the national anthem? It used to be an actual song. <laughs> you know? The white guy would come out there now. All rise. <laughs> Why do white singers, when they start singing, they tippy toe a little bit? You ever see that? For the singing <laughs> of your national anthem. Oh, sir. Can you see <laughs> by the dawn's early light? They're big on enunciation, ain't they? Light. What so proudly we hail. How come when a brother make a do the anthem, he want to make an album. <laughs> At a high school game, you know? Brother come out like, what's up? <laughs> this is a little something I call an anthem. <laughs> My real name, Anthony. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, nang, nang. Oh, nang, nang. Woo, 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 woo. Soon they're gonna have rappers doing the anthem. You know that's gonna happen. Hey, yo, what's up? Soon the rappers are just gonna start sticking their whole hand in their ass. Just, <laughs> I got my hand in my ass, oh, yo. Is this live? No, I'm just kidding. So come on, y'all, let's rock this anthem, y'all. Watch my DJ rock a last degree. Lick you like a lollipop. <laughs> this white girl going, you were doing good till you put Lil Wayne in that. <laughs> Let's give it up for Obama. <laughs> I'd love to see white guys fake it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right on for that guy. White guys are poor sports. You guys were like 43 and 0. 400 years, never lost a championship. We went two back-to-back -back titles, they got a fucking problem. Black people ain't turning on Obama. That's a different kind of president for us. He's black. So stop asking us dumb questions at work. White people wait that. They wake up in the morning, I'm gonna ask a black person a dumb question at work today. You know? So are you gonna vote for Obama just because he's black? Yes. <laughs> That's the reason why I'm voting. <laughs> it's the only election that makes sense to me. I got a 50% chance of winning this bitch. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Obama didn't win the elections because of his politics. He won because of the debates, man. He was freestyling. <laughs> he has shit to lose. They asked him a question, he started making shit up. <laughs> Senator Obama, what do you think about the word it? Well, first, let's think about the word it. <laughs> if it means lowering interest rates so that Americans could afford homes, and it is plausible, and it should work. <laughs> now, 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 of course, that's if we're talking about it. If it is too legit to quit, Obama could have you at the edge of your seat. Even black people would be like, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> you ever seen Obama draw you in real close? I want everyone to look at my finger. <laughs> Can you see it? And if you can't see it, I'll put it back here. <laughs> I want to ask each and every American one question. 
Where's an owl? Where's my finger now? That's right, it's in my ass, but you can't tell, can you? Because you simply can't see it. Trust me, it's in there. Are you listening close? It's out of there. But there's absolutely no way you can tell it was in there unless you can smell it. Trust me, it's been in there. I can smell a lot of things in my finger right now. Mike and Ike. Sufritos. We're in New York, so Puerto Rican. Sufritos. Actually, I think we need a black woman president for terrorism. You fight terror with terror. Ask any white girl who went to high school with black girls who the fucking terror is. She found out the first day of school. What the fuck? I don't even fucking know you, bitch. You ain't got to know me for whip your ass. I don't fucking know her. My question is, why do white girls got to know who hit them? I don't know her. You're like, bitch, run. I know her. This bitch is crazy. Fucking, you know? I got to give it to white girls. When they want to know something, they want to fucking know it, dude. They catch you in the hallway like two days later by yourself. You think you're in the hallway with Carrie and shit. Because white girls are fucking emotional. <laughs> are you all right? Yeah. <laughs> you wish there was a trap door in your locker and shit. Yeah. She, she stepped straight to you like Dracula. I need to ask you a question. Uh, what? Who in the fuck was that? <laughs> Bitch, you still talking about that shit? Black women are psychic with their children. Black women ain't gotta tell their children to sit down, they just think sit down. Black children know what sit down look like. <laughs> My mother had one look mean, your ass is whipped when we get home. She can be talking to somebody here in the grocery store and lob your ass whipping to the corner. Yeah, we be over there about three o'clock, mm-hmm. <laughs> you can feel that ass whipping shoot through your body. All the other kids move out the way, Woo! How the fuck did I get harpooned from an ass whipping from 60 yards out? Worst thing about a black woman is she gonna have an I'ma whip your ass party in the car. So not only are you gonna get an ass whipping, there's a pre-party. She got you in the car like, woo! She's singing shit off the radio. I got my eyes on you. I'm fitting to whip your fucking ass, watch. I had enough for you. Just hold on, we're going home. Don't look out the window, because it get worse. Because now it's question and answer time. Black women answer you questions you, you can't answer, you know. You had fun at the store? You can't get out of that. No, you look like you was having fun. You throw around that fucking Frisbee. Was you having fun throwing around that fucking Frisbee? You don't know what to say. No, I wasn't having fun. Throwing around that fucking Frisbee. Good answer. My mother asked you a question to scare my dog. Cause my dog can sense an ass whipping. My mother asked you a question that's only designed to get you in the middle of the living room. You know? Bring that laundry basket over here. That's a funny question for Wednesday night. Come on. Bring that laundry basket over here. Now, now dogs can't talk, but my dog is in the corner trying to. You know? <laughs> my dog's back there going, Sorry. This is a sincere white girl. That sounded like nigger to me. <laughs> it's a dog, okay? He can't say that. All right, we got a great show coming up. How y'all feeling? <laughs> let's get this thing cranked up and let's get some comics in here. What do you say? Come on, come on. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Pat Dixon is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV program.
presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Okay, let's give it up for our first comedian, Pat Dixon. He's the host of NYC Crime Report. Let's give it up. Come on, Pat Dixon, you guys. Come on. Thank you. I read in the paper a woman gave birth on the subway platform downtown. Broadway Lafayette platform. One of the nastier platforms in the city. A lot of words for that platform. Sterile isn't one of them. You know what I mean? I'm sure this kid stuck his head out and said, I take it we're not rich. <laughs> Gotta admire this woman's commitment to public transportation. You know, if I'm running a little late, I might jump in a cab. This woman's in labor. She's like, where's that F train? Is that... Let's see, four minutes between contractions. I'm dilated six centimeters. Five stops on the express. Fuck it, I can make it. <laughs> like to travel. Took a big trip last year. Went to, to France and to Greece. You know, you always think you're gonna learn some French and then you go uh, on the plane. You're like, let's see, how do I speak this shit? You know what I mean? And if you don't speak French, in Paris, they get a little upset. You know what I mean? I learned three words. I've been there twice. I know three. Je voudrais crepes. I want crepes. <laughs> That's what I said for four days. I want crepes. <laughs> Turns out in Paris, I'm considered a little obnoxious. <laughs> Went to Greece. Love the Greeks. A uh, couple of reasons. First of all, not French. <laughs> Second of all, they don't expect you to speak their bullshit language. They don't expect you to speak Greek. They know it's impossible. You take one look at it and you're like, oh, there's no fucking way. <laughs> speak this. It's like a relief. There's like letters in the words that aren't letters. It's like letter, letter, shape. <laughs> letter, letter, lightning bolts. <laughs> and you sound that out. <laughs> People think French people are rude. You hear that a lot. I don't have enough evidence, really, to say that. The only people I talk to are selling crepes. <laughs> uh, it'd be like judging everybody in the United States based on the people who sell you crap in Times Square. Right? And you'd be like, man, these Americans are really Nigerian. I don't know, uh, I know we got people from all over. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what the homeless people are like, where you're from, but uh, I think here in New York, there's pr they're pretty tolerable uh, people. They're nice, you know? And then occasionally, one of them will push somebody in front of a train. <laughs> and people here go, well, <laughs> should have paid attention. He's <laughs> pushing me in front of a train. <laughs> and keep your head on a swivel, you know? And then people say things like, oh, you know, you're not very likely to be pushed in front of a train. No, I mean, statistically, you're more likely to throw yourself in front of a train. Well, that's comforting. So I'm not a suicidal person at all, you know, but some days the MTA just gives you a little bit too much time to think about it. You know, tired of watching this rat eat this bag of Cheetos. You know. He's not even in the bag. He's like holding it, reaching in. I think he bought those Cheetos. It's kind of disgusting. The rat's like, yeah, you should have been here earlier. There was a lady having a kid. <laughs> been uh, seeing this girl for a couple of years and uh, you know, uh, people keep telling us we should get married. You hear that a lot, you know. You guys should get married, you know. And seems to make her feel good. Always makes me feel kind of awkward. <laughs> Because here's what they don't know. I'm already married. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, not really. I'm divorced a couple of times, though. Which, uh, she wants me to meet her parents. That's why I'm not afraid to meet her parents, really, you know? Because uh, I don't know if, whether or not they're going to like me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm divorced a couple of times, you know? I'm, I'm 15 years older than her, and uh, I live in a rented room in Queens. If they don't like me, you know, I agree. <laughs> of 
course they don't like me. I don't like me. If they do like me, they're shitty parents. The three of us should sit down and figure out how to get her away from this guy. Maybe some sort of cash settlement. But there's one thing I want to tell them. Uh, your daughter's very vocal in bed. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah. She says things, she would say, don't stop to me, you know. You ever have sex? Woman says, don't stop, you know. She tells me that, to encourage me. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, yeah. How do you feel when a woman says, don't stop? You know how I feel? Exhausted, that's how I feel. <laughs> Immediately exhausted, you know. And then kind of angry, too, you know. Like, why are you bossing me around like that, you know. And then I get paranoid, you know, because I start thinking, like, how does this girl know I'm thinking about stopping? Because <laughs> she nailed it. <laughs> I was about to wrap it up. But uh, she's adjusted her expectations, you know. And she doesn't say, don't stop anymore, you know. Now she just says, do your best. <laughs> she's a great girl, but, you know, I, I say this, I love her, but she doesn't understand my sexual fantasies. It's pretty important, you know? Like, I, I told her, uh, I always wanted to be with two women, you know? And she's like, uh, okay, well, what makes you think you could satisfy two women? I'm like, I don't, it's not really part of the fantasy. <laughs> Never occurred to me, actually. To say, what is, whose fantasy is this, anyway? I, starting to sound like a lot of hard work. It's like, well, do your best. <laughs> I like to send flowers a couple of times a year. Because women like that, you know? Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Women, you like getting flowers? Sure. We send them. It doesn't make any sense to us. Because, uh, you know, like, like you would never want to get flowers. No guy would want to get flowers. We, men like a more practical gift. You know, like $40. <laughs> you know? Huh. Yeah. That would actually be really cool, you know? <laughs> Would it kill you to occasionally cough up 40 bucks? <laughs> and just give it to me? You know what I mean? How about we'll do that? I'll send flowers, you give me $40. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but women like flowers, you know? And any woman here, where do you like to be when you get flowers? Where do you like to be? Just yell it out? At work, right, yeah, and why? Because you get them and you're like, yeah, look at this, you bitches, check us out. <laughs> I got flowers today. Uh, they should make a bouquet that comes with like a tiara and a sash. <laughs> so you can take a little victory lap. You know? <laughs> uh, true, yeah. true, women love flowers, you know, because they're pretty and they smell good. You know what men love? Vaginas. Because <laughs> they're pretty. <laughs> You know, you know. I love, I love the way vaginas smell. Um, not trying to be gross or weird or anything. You know, always do a family show, you know, I'm just saying. Women love flowers, men love vaginas, you know, that's, that's true. You know, I've sent women flowers before. Never have I been at work. <clears throat> Some guy comes in, big bouquet of vaginas for you, right? Can't do that. Be too expensive. <laughs> Wouldn't everybody at work be envious, though? You know, like, oh, look at that. Somebody got vaginas. You know? <laughs> those, those, I mean, they're not for me, are they? That's, there's no way he's going to eat all those. You know why, we, you know why we, we can't figure out the way we think, why like men and women think different? And I think it's because uh, we usually think with our dicks as men, right? I don't know why I look at you, but you know, men, we think with our dicks. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we do, we do, we think with our dicks. You think with your, every guy in here, if you have a dick, you think with it. <laughs> but women, you wanna know why we think with our dicks? You wanna know why? Because our dicks have some pretty good ideas. <laughs> My dick says, let's go out and have a good time tonight. I'm like, yeah. Good idea, Dick. Let's do that. Yeah. You know what? I like my dick. He's got balls. <laughs> all right. I'm all done. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Stay tuned.
for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Casey Balsham is taking the stage when we return. Not only this young lady just moved to New York from LA, this is her first TV appearance, okay? Let's give it up for Casey Balsham. Come on, you guys. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> So much better than my normal intro. It's like, oh, it's a girl. Uh, <laughs> she's gonna get up here and suck all your dicks. I, um, <laughs> it gets so busy. Um, <laughs> constant dicks. Oh, God, you guys. Hi, New York, I'm freezing. How you doing? <laughs> I'm from LA, so this is what a season is? That's what you guys call this? It's fucking cold, but you know what? At least you guys know how to dress for the cold weather. Like, I'm from LA, we wear stretch pants and boots, and we're like, fucking done, we're warm. Like, it's like a memo went out that was like, da -da -da -da, camel toe, everybody go. <laughs> it's not that weird for me, though, because generally when I wear stretch pants, I just dress to the left. I throw both lips over to one side. <laughs> <laughs> have a little vag nugget, just like, hey, vag, vag nugget coming to McDonald's. <laughs> Big popular item, ranch and peroxide. I'm just kidding. I uh, don't like the badge nugget song. I'm sorry. It's like a guy, right? I'm just dressing to the left. It's not my fault. I was kind of raised like a tomboy. Like my dad had two girls, so he's like, well, you fucking like baseball. And I'm like, all right, I like baseball. It's fine. Um, I'm a San Francisco Giants fan. No big deal. Thank you. Very, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, here's my thing about baseball, though, guys. I mean, does it freak anybody else out that there are human beings that can throw a ball 100 miles an hour? Like, I have a 97 Honda CRV. That thing fucking shakes at 73. <laughs> like, ah so next time I'm late for work, I'm just gonna find a Dominican, have him throw me there, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there. <laughs> I was just actually in San Francisco and I was visiting my parents. Yes, thank God, every time I say it, I'm like, ah, I get it, you're fucking from there, relax. <laughs> I'm just kidding, thank you for the support. Uh, yeah. <laughs> No, so I was home in San Francisco, which we all know is great. I, uh, <laughs> I was there visiting my parents. They're still there. Um, it's weird, though, because they're divorced now, and my mom is actually dating a black guy, and my dad is dating an Asian woman. Yes, it's very exciting. I'm a comic. Thank you very much. I, uh, <laughs> it's like, this works out well. But it's weird, because it's not like they hated each other enough in the divorce to go gay. They just went to minorities. They were like, yeah, yeah, bigger dick, smaller hole. We'll take it. Fucking... <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I know, my dad hates that joke. He's like, you say I have a small wiener on stage. I'm like, she's hitting a black guy, you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Not my problem. It is weird though, <laughs> keeping the joke. Uh, it's bizarre though, because my parents are both dating and I am just like violently single. Like I am just like not even close to being uh, a mother. And I, uh, <laughs> I just, it's hard though, because I feel like when it comes down to girls and boys and the way we, we qualify relationships, like it'll take a guy like six months before he's like, oh yeah, that's mine. And like I brush elbows with a guy at a bank and I'm like, so I met someone and like, <laughs> we're doing good. <laughs> Weird, because I'm at, I'm at a really weird age, too. I'm 32, so it's like, it's, it's weird, because the only people that hit on me now are like boys in their 20s or divorcees in their 40s, because everybody my age is just toughing it out through that first marriage. <laughs> like, just see you in 10 years. Um, <laughs> And it's bizarre though, because like with the younger guys, there's definitely a disconnect. Like, I don't know, like, okay, this is gonna sound terrifying, but the last guy I legitimately dated was 21. Yeah, yeah, he worked at my bar. I wasn't just driving by school, like, hey, you're the fastest runner, get in. <laughs> I'm a coach. <laughs> Come on. 
Like he found me. But there's a definite, there's a definite disconnect, especially with, okay, and I use the term dating loosely. I really mean we were just texting and I just, you know, like I don't know anything about him except for he uses no punctuation and fucking all lowercase letters. I'm like, throw me an emoji, show me you care. You know, like do something, <laughs> come on. So, but like he would, he would do the weird thing with texting. I don't know if anybody else is weird with texting. Like I like, that's a deal breaker for me. Like if you're a weird texter, like bye bye, see you later. So this kid, he used to do the lazy thing. So he'd be like, what are you doing tonight? And I was like, okay, if you're gonna be lazy with letters, like what else are you gonna shortchange me in? <laughs> like, are you gonna try and fuck my pussy? And I do like. I just, I feel like if you're not gonna give me the U, you're not gonna give me the O, so I don't know why the hell we're. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm just, you know, I'm just a ha ha kind of girl trying to date in an LOL kind of world, you guys. <laughs> it's not working out. But, okay, on the other side of the spectrum, then the older gentlemen. For them, I feel like they're more likely to like find things wrong with you, but like stuff that they already knew about you, you know, like this guy I dated, he's like, you drink too much. I was like, you found me at a bar in a corner. <laughs> it's not my fault you thought I had potential. Like I was, <laughs> I was wearing a tutu for Christ's sakes. Like you think I'm mommy material? <laughs> I actually, it's terrifying. I'm, I'm so immature. I had a pregnancy scare one time, you guys. I thought I was pregnant. It turns out I'm just lactose intolerant. <laughs> I sat on the toilet. I was like, I hope it's crap. Because <laughs> if it's a baby, I'm just going to leave it in there. I, uh, <laughs> whatever. Whatever. Come on, let, according to the Nirvana album cover, circa the 90s, babies be swimming. They are fine. <laughs> babies be swimming. It is weird though, cause I'm getting older, but not more mature. Like it's a really bizarre world to live in. Like I have a bad back, but I've seen Frozen five goddamn times. <laughs> like I'm like a man child. I don't, speaking of Frozen, you guys, this is just a side note. Is it me or heart or cartoons getting hotter? Like I would fucking fuck that bad prince in Frozen. <laughs> Anybody else? Like, I would take that ginger down. It would be weird though, like if that was a reality, like could you imagine your roommate walks in on you and I was like, oh, be like Lisa, Aladdin, Aladdin, Lisa, he's a prince. Like it'd be weird. <laughs> I don't know. Hi, I didn't want you guys to meet like this. <laughs> what was that? Oh, I was talking about being immature, wasn't I? Look at, I don't even remember things like a grown up. So yes, I'm immature. I'm at this really weird point in my life too where I just kind of wish I made every other decision besides the ones that I made, including this blue on blue ensemble um, and this hair to the side. So it's like, but my friend, I was telling my friend Melanie, I was like, listen, I was like, she's like, you have to stay positive about this. You have to put your sticky notes. Do you guys put sticky notes? Like, so when you wake up, one says like, you're beautiful and you're amazing. And so I was like, I put my sticky notes up. One says kegels, one says I am enough. Like I'm. <laughs> trying to keep it together. So, <laughs> essentially, bottom line, you guys, I watch a lot of porn. I, uh, I think single and porn are kind of, it's like one, it's like, duh, you know what I mean? My thing with porn though, it's like, I mean, it just gives guys this false sense of hope that whatever hole they find first is fair game, and that's not a thing. Like. I let a guy stick his finger in my butt once and it was only because he was going to war, so I did it for my country. Like, <laughs> why is everybody else slutty? Oh, man. <laughs> I just, it's this whole bizarre concept that like you don't know the difference between the two. Like, are you serious? We're grownups. They're clearly mapped out situations, guys. Like one of them is like, oh, it's a pretty pink flower, water me out. And the other is just like this angry old woman, just like, oh. <laughs> Like one of them's like, oh, it's so nice in here. And the other's like, you take me to the casinos. I want to play the slots. Just, uh. Like I said, I'm lactose intolerant. All right, thank you so much, you guys. I'm in case you them. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Ian Biden is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the XSTV presentation of
of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs right now. All right. Our next comedian, this is his first TV debut, as well as give it up for Ian Fightins. Come on, you guys. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Yeah. Guys, it's been cold out. I don't like it. I miss the fall. Fall is my favorite time of year because fall is the best time of year to get a white girl. Yeah. Yeah, are you kidding me, man? Fall is white girl season, baby. All you have to do... <laughs> I'll tell you. All you have to do is say the magic phrase, pumpkin spice latte, <laughs> and they're yours. <laughs> Bonus points if you mention brunch, because brunch is like catnip for white women. They <laughs> love brunch. <laughs> it is... <laughs> you like that, don't you, sir? Jesus. <laughs> it is so easy to get a white chick with Uggs in the fall. <laughs> All you have to do is just mention outdoor things. Like, oh, what am I doing this weekend? Uh, leaves. <laughs> There's gonna be a pumpkin patch. Uh, I'm gonna have like 50 extra scarves. And on Sunday, I'm gonna go get brunch. There's bottomless mimosas. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Shut up, uh-uh, no, uh-uh, shut up. I can't, I just can't. I can't, I can't right now. I just can't, I can't even, I just can't. I seriously can't. <laughs> Lady, what can't you even? <laughs> what can you not just, I don't understand. My. <laughs> My ex used to do that all the time. She'd be like, seriously? Like, seriously, Ian? Seriously? Like, seriously? I can't. Like, literally? Literally? Like, literally? Like, literally, I died. Like, I'm literally dead. Like, I'm dead. I died. I'm a ghost. Call the Ghostbusters. Have a seance. I've left this celestial plane. I'm no longer here. I died because I can't. <laughs> and I was like, I can't date you any longer. <laughs> I literally cannot. <laughs> or else I will die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a great relationship now. I was single for a while, and when I was single, I was on Tinder. And uh, there you go, one sad sack in the back. That's great. <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know, Tinder is an online dating app you use with your phone. And it's for the relationship that's on the go that's going nowhere. Uh, <laughs> And at its base, Tinder is what they call a sex app. Uh, it's meant for hooking up, and all it is is a profile picture with a general location. So theoretically, when you get a match, you're supposed to message a person, be like, hey, uh, you got a nice face, I got a Honda Civic, you're a half mile away, let's get to getting. <laughs> <laughs> and even though girls, it's a sex app, girls will still put inspirational quotes on their profile. <laughs> So like, it'll be a picture of a girl with a ton of cleavage, and it'll be like, if a bird can fly wherever it wants, why can't I? <laughs> you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. <laughs> Sing like no one's listening, dance like no one's watching, I'm gonna go fuck a stranger. <laughs> And okay, all right, we're a match. We are a match, we, we, we meet up, we hit it off, we get married and have kids. 
what am I gonna tell my kid? <laughs> my son is gonna come up to me and be like, Papa, what did... <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> My son is going to be French. Uh, <laughs> Dad, how did you meet Mom? Uh, well, son, come here. Uh, your mother had a face, and uh, she was a mile away, and now you're here. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> I, uh, I used to be a teacher. Uh, I used to teach. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> And you know, I would go in every day to teach those kids, but you know what? They ended up teaching me. <laughs> How much I hate kids. <laughs> there was a problem on the board one day, a kid raised his hand, he goes, Mr. Finance, this is confusing. Is this a mistake? And I was like, yes, <laughs> this is a mistake. This is not where I'm supposed to be in life right now. <laughs> They would get in trouble and get right out of trouble by complimenting me. Like one of the students, uh, I caught her giving me the finger behind my back. I was like, Janelle, do not give me the finger. I wasn't giving you the finger. Janelle, don't lie to me. It insults my intelligence. Since when did you get intelligence? <laughs> like, Excuse me, what did you say? I was just wondering, at like what age did you become intelligence? <laughs> was it? Was you 11 or 12? Because one day I would like to become intelligent. Your hair looks nice. Did you get a haircut? Are you single? My mom is single. Would you like to be my dad? <laughs> Classroom management was a huge issue. I was teaching in the South Bronx, Boogie Down Bronx, the very first day I went in. Kids are swinging from the ceiling. They're pushing, they're shoving, they're twerking. I just, <laughs> I didn't know what to do. It was like, think, Ian, think, think. You gotta make an analogy, you gotta relate. What do kids like? Kids like baseball. Class, class, class. <laughs> Class, 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 we are a team. We are the best team. We are the Yankees. And this kid was like, yo, the Yankees is ass. I was like, please, Darian, please. <laughs> Eyes up front, please. We are a team. And what does a team do? A team respects its coach, okay? I am your coach, and I'm gonna lead us to victory. When it comes time for the state exams, we are gonna win the World Series of State Exams. Yeah! And, uh... Two minutes later, this kid was like, yo, this team sucks. I want to be traded. He's like, no, no, Tyshawn, trade deadline is over, okay? And it was tough. I worked at a progressive school, so I couldn't give them detention. The only thing I could do was grab a desk and be like, please stop, please, I beg of you, please. And the kids, to them, they thought that like, all I cared about in this world was giving them homework and that I lived in the fucking school. Like, that's all they thought. <laughs> so in their eyes, I was the biggest loser in the history of the world. And it took everything out of me to not just stop the class every day and be like, you know what, I am cool, all right? I was in a band, we toured the East Coast. And a kid would be like, uh, Mr. Finance, isn't it true you only played sh three shows in Jersey? I'd be like, oh, fuck you, Anthony, okay? <laughs> I get chicks sometimes, all right? <laughs> let, me, let me ask you something, Anthony. You ever touch a vagina? No? Keep adding fractions. And I drop the marker and I shush out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll never forget, my, my last day teaching, I gave them a math problem. I put a uh, meter stick on the board, and they were to find in the room what was larger than a meter. And uh, one of the kids raised his hand and goes, my dick! <laughs> and I got so mad that I couldn't high-five him, because that is an amazing joke. You guys have been a lot of fun. My name's Ian Fadia. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Joe Bartnick is taking the stage when we return.
welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. You might be able to see this guy in the all-in tour this summer. Give it up for Joe Bartnick, you guys. Come on. New York City, what is up? Yeah! You guys drinking? Sweet. I'm drinking. I love drinking. I drink the Crown Royal. Yeah, you know why? Because when you buy a bottle of Crown, you get a purple bag to put your weed into. <laughs> drink up! But whatever you do, do not drink and drive. No. Because there are people out there texting. <laughs> and they will run into you. And it'll be your fault. I am from California. Thank you. I used to live in San Francisco. Now I live in LA. Both places are cool, but the women are a little different. San Francisco girls, they have their sweaters and their guilt. <laughs> Sucks being chubby in LA too, because you know, we're less clothes, it doesn't look good. Like you can't wear a wife beater if you look like a wife beater. <laughs> if you have a six pack, wear a wife beater. If you just drank a six pack, keep your sleeves on. My wife wants me to lose weight, fucking bitch. <laughs> so oh, she ruined my life. Like, all I really do is go around the country, drink Crown Royal, tell dick jokes to great people like you. <laughs> or I stay home, get high, and eat ice cream. <laughs> but now my wife has replaced ice cream with yogurt. <laughs> fucking yogurt. <laughs> She's like, you can put berries in. You can put bananas in it! I'm like, can I put Crown Royal in it? Because I'm high and it still tastes like shit. Can't go good. Hey, I can't read this one. Ten. Powerball! Powerball. So I got a kid. You don't have to clap, it's my fucking problem. <laughs> All my single comic guy friends like, Joe, man, what's it like being a dad? I'm like, well, it's kind of like getting a parking ticket you can never pay off. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have parked there. <laughs> but I was only there a minute. <laughs> Should have parked around the back. <laughs> Wait. I'm a good dad though. I love my kid. And she gra and she's in fourth grade now. I'm just happy she graduated third grade. <laughs> Shit was hard. <laughs> I couldn't even help her with her homework. The math? They do long division and fractions. Only fractions I know are drug words. Like an eighth, a gram, a quarter pound. <laughs> the problem is Jose has an ounce of blow and eight friends. And how much does everybody get? <laughs> then I can help you. <laughs> if not, wait for mommy. <laughs> the answer is Jose gets more than anybody because he's nicking everybody's shit. I like drugs. I've done them all except one. Guess which one? No, Viagra. <laughs> I never had to. I mean, I only get the same steel I used to get back in seventh grade. <laughs> Thinking the desk is gonna break, like, 
Feels like a rocket ship taking off. MTV music. No. Now my erections are more like a helicopter taking off with the sad mash music. You guys are a cool couple right down front. You guys gonna have sex tonight? He's like, fuck yeah. I'd... Two drink minimum, I'm going balls deep. <laughs> well, if you are and you don't wanna have any kids, here's my big tip for the evening. Do not use the pull out method of birth control. Apparently, some sperm is more potent than others. Mine crawled off her back. <laughs> it's the truth. It's called the love drop. It's kind of like if you get a hot dog and then you squeeze the mustard. And the first thing that comes out ain't mustard. Well now I call that Isabella. And I gotta pay for college. Unless I get divorced, then it's art school. I say beauty school in the dumb cities. <laughs> you mean the what? I'm Joe Bartnick, thanks a lot. TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Okay. I don't know what the fuck. What do you mean, knock knock? <laughs> fucking white boy, knock knock! <laughs> knock your fucking ass out, shit. <laughs> I didn't mean that kind of enough fucking knock. Glad to be in New York. I think I do 45 seconds. Glad to be in New York. Where are my Puerto Ricans at? <laughs> Is this New York? You don't understand. You don't need to speak English if you're in New York. You know, you ever seen an old Puerto Rican woman on the news and there's like a crime story? She doesn't even use English, just like a little bit, you know? Uh, Ma'am, what happened? Hey, the police call me. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> y, y, pero because of the man, he make it a problem. What, ma'am? He make the problem. What? He have the gun. <laughs> Let's bring up these comics. Come on, you guys. <laughs> Let's give it up for Pat Dixon. <laughs> Casey Balsham. Ian Fidens and Joe Bartnick and we are the new